Thank you everyone for coming um, to our last lecture of IPAC 2024. We are very excited to have people Park to um, tell us more about the commentorial atlas and the application. Um, okay, you can take over, Igor. Thank um, you. Uh, thank you, Anna. And uh, this is mostly uh, going to be independent from the previous lectures. I'm not going to, I'm going to mention atlases, but I'm not going to uh, build the theory further up the way uh, Swihon presented it. So thank you, Swihon, for uh, uh, setting up uh, a lot of stuff and discussing a lot of inequalities. Um, I'm, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to use some of that. Uh, uh, some of the stuff you've seen before, and this is going to be uh, sort of uh, somewhat informal talk uh, since the audience is uh, relatively small. You can just interrupt me, ask me questions, and so forth. So I'm assuming that you've seen uh, what linear extensions uh, are uh, of postsets. Uh, you remember that from the last lecture. So uh, so linear extension is a uh, is a bijection that is order preserving. And you know, uh, E of P is, an, uh, is a set of linear extensions. And the most important thing is N of A is uh, uh, for a given fixed element X. Uh, N of A is the number of uh, linear extensions with a given value uh, at that element. So, uh, so now we have uh, a fundamental inequality due to Stanley, um, uh, which uh, gives log concavity for uh, for the number of uh, uh, linear extensions. Uh, um, okay. Uh, so hopefully everyone is okay with that. So this was conjectured back in the 60s and then rediscovered uh, in Russia, then discovered in America and conjectured by rival, univadality was conjectured by rival or captivity by Chung Fishburne Graham and uh, proved uh, in a very famous important paper by, uh, by Stanley in 1981. So this is sort of a screen, uh, screenshot uh, of the paper. And this is the paper that's gonna come uh, that's going to come up all, uh, all, all the time in this uh, in this talk. So, uh, so this is kind of important. Anyone has any questions about this? All right. Okay, so Hong says hi. <laughs> uh, yes. So, um, so now that you've seen uh, sort of simpler version of the inequality, uh, just like Hong said at the end of the last talk, uh, uh, our main uh, uh, our main discussion is going to be about the general version of the inequality. So here we don't just fix one element x; we also fix elements z1, z2 up to zk, uh, and uh, numbers c1, c2 up to zk. Um, and we're going to uh, look uh, at uh, the number n of a, which is the number of linear extensions, which take on element x value a, just like before, but also take value c1 up to ck on elements uh, uh, z1 up to zk. And uh, what do you know? It's the same result. Literally, uh, I just cut and pasted the same the same theorem, uh, which uh, which says that uh, uh, these numbers a of n of a, which now depend on more parameters, as you see, are still log concave. So that is uh, uh, a remarkable fact. And uh, 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 what we're gonna do, just like uh, Swihon mentioned last time, we're gonna uh, we're gonna talk about conditions for equality. Uh, and uh, uh, and the most um, uh, important thing to understand is that the 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 complicated. There is uh, it's been a long time, and uh, there was not much of a progress on this problem until very very recently. So uh, with that, uh, I'll 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 tell you the first version of the main result. Uh, and uh, and I'll explain why. I'll explain why very quickly. So uh, so what we're saying is that uh, the one way to understand the result is to ask whether there exists a combinatorial proof of that result. So one can define the defect of, of, of this uh, inequality to, uh, to be the, uh, uh, the right-hand side, the, the larger part minus the smaller part, and ask if the defect is in sharp P. And uh, we're saying no. The defect, so this this is some kind of uh, negative integer function, uh, 
so that this defect is uh, not an uh, not, not an sharp p unless uh, uh, ph is equal to sigma two. So it doesn't sort of matter what what those are. ph tends for polynomial hierarchy. Uh, sigma two is uh, a level in the polynomial hierarchy. You can sort of see them uh, with, with an arrow here, and we're saying that whatever is the picture that computer scientists believe is true is uh, is actually going to be not true. So computer scientists believe that there are lots of layers in the polynomial hierarchy, and we're saying no. The difference in those numbers uh, 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 does not have a combinatorial interpretation, which we interpret as being in sharp P. So that is a weak version of our results, and I'll get back to equality conditions in a minute. Are there any questions about this? Uh, so if you do have questions I uh, and you want to understand more about combinatorial interpretation, I have a, a whole giant survey uh, which is titled What is a combinatorial interpretation? So it's sort of easy to remember and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, all this stuff is explained there. And uh, now that you've seen this, we can, we can go back to, uh, 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 to equality condition. So our main question is equality condition of this inequality. That's what uh, originally Stanley asked. Uh, and we're saying that uh, 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 there is a stronger result than the one I showed, that this equality condition is not on cohen P. So again, cohen, cohen P is the opposite of an P. And we're saying that if this was inequality, so uh, uh, so one side is strictly bigger than the other side, then uh, uh, you would not have a witness uh, which you can test in polynomial time. Uh, uh, so, uh, so if it wasn't coin, uh, if, if this wasn't coin p, then the, uh, the opposite uh, uh, would be in n p. So there would be a witness for the non-equality, and we're saying that that's impossible unless pH collapses. So in particular, this is stronger than be, having in, uh, uh, being in sharp P, which is basically counting all the witnesses. Uh, and uh, as you can see, polynomial hierarchy is up there, coin P is right here, so you should not expect a collapse. And uh, I know this is uh, 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 way too many uh, uh, computer science uh, uh complexity classes but so let me uh, not ask if you understand this so you don't have to uh, sort of watch and stand silence and uh, let me uh, just uh, continue uh, with our main results so this is our strongest version the equal uh, the, the real equality condition not only is not in coin p it's not even in the polynomial hierarchy if the polynomial hierarchy collapses so it's uh, so the way uh, the way to understand it a human level, it's, it's basically complicated. There is no way to quickly uh, decide, or there is no way to find a witness which would be uh, quickly tested, or there is no way to have uh, 100 quantifiers, uh, 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 any fixed numbers that would allow you uh, uh, to, to, ha to have a test whether there is an equality here or not. So, so the point is this is very, very, very complicated. And uh, that's uh, th that's what we're proving. And the proof um, of that result requires uh, uh, a rather deep and delicate understanding of what's going on uh, with uh, equality condition. Is uh, is the result clear, at least on a superficial level? Everyone okay with this? All right. So now, uh, there is, there is just one thing that I kind of uh, want you to know, uh, and uh, there is one key ingredient here. And the key ingredient here is that, in fact, uh, 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 the inequality is complicated, but non-equality of two adjacent numbers would seem much simpler. So we have a number of linear extensions of this kind and of that kind. Is this the same number or not? That sounds... Uh, uh, rather simple, and it's not. It's just as hard as the previous one. And uh, and in fact, uh, uh, what we do is we prove the main result uh, uh, using this result uh, uh, as, as, as a lemma. So in some sense, the, uh, this problem is, is the key to understanding the whole thing. And uh, as I'll mention in a minute, uh, Schenfer and Van Handel have the whole theory which uh, discusses uh, uh, standard inequality. 
and uh, and essentially the way to uh, the way to think of uh, numbers n of a uh, this uh, as Stanley proved this is a log concave sequence uh, but really it sort of starts with a lot of zeros then it's strictly increasing until uh, until the middle part uh, and uh, you see it, uh, and and then there's a flat part so you see you cannot have a flat because of log concavity or uh, you you can uh, you, you 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 cannot have a, a sort of uh, one point uh, uh, pushing down that would even violate unimodality so you cannot have a kind of wave uh, wavy function uh it sort of has to be uh flat but it cannot be even flat even there so that that also uh uh, uh uh, contradicts uh, uh, the uh, uh, things we know about uh, this function. So, so in reality, uh, it's very easy to test whether two numbers are zero, uh, but it is not it is not easy at all to test whether two numbers are in the middle part uh, uh, coincide over there, and uh, 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 and that's uh, and that is our main lemma. Is that is that clear? Okay, so we also need the uh, 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 we, we need some other tools, but among uh, among all the tools, we need the computational complexity results that the number of linear extensions sharp be complete. So it's as hard as any other problem in the class sharp key. And uh, that is the thirty year old theorem by Bright van Winkler. Okay, so uh, so now I want to uh, go to the positive results. And this uh, links to uh, results that uh, uh, Sri Hong talked uh, talked about last time. And uh, so, uh, so this so here I'm repeating the theorem from above. Uh, but uh, and it's uh, uh, there's one caveat here that uh, we need to mention that so remember we fix uh, we fix k element on which uh, our linear extension uh, has fixed values uh, so elements with z1 up to the k and values with z1 up to the k uh, but there is a k greater or equal to two as uh, as an assumption so it's natural to ask what happens when k is equal to either zero or one and uh, turns out that in this case equality conditions are easy so and by easy i don't mean actually easy uh, equality condition can be described easily so the description is not too long i'm not uh, uh, i'm not listing it here for for k equal to zero they are actually quite natural and uh, uh, rather simple for k equal to one they're much more complicated but still uh, the equality conditions are uh, r and p and uh, so one can look at uh, at a post set and uh, given uh, given a post set given elements x and z uh, and values uh, a and c one can decide that there is a quality condition here in polynomial time these are just some inequalities uh, which uh, post set has to satisfy uh, now here is a story so the most interesting part is the story of uh, how this result was obtained so as you can see the first half of this result is Schenfer and Van Handel and uh, uh, Schenfer and Van Handel proved the quality condition of Stanley uh, the quality for k equal to zero and this was a major breakthrough and uh, they used the geometric tools for that so just like uh, uh, Stanley used Alexander Fentch and equality they used uh, um, rather more complicated tools involving mixed volume theory now, uh, uh, Swihon and I pr uh, uh, proved uh, and uh, uh, and, ge uh, and generalized Schenfer and Van Handel result to uh, to weighted linear extension, and the way we did it is exactly using combinatorial uh, 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 atlases so in our in our large paper a very long paper that we wrote the published version is actually about 100 pages which sort of surprised me because i tried to make the version to be very short to be 69 or 70 pages uh, we wanted to make sure the first digit is small but uh, the published version still you know they have proprietary font and uh, it became 100 pages so so, so somewhere in there we prove equality condition for k equal to zero again uh, uh, what what happened later is uh, 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 mine Schenfeld used the uh, 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 Schenfeld and Van Handel theory 
to, pro uh, to, uh, uh, to prove that if we have a quality, then we actually have a quality of all three numbers. Uh, uh, so all three numbers have to be equal. So this is the, the flat part of, of the distribution that you've seen uh, before. However, uh, even though they did find the necessary sufficient condition, in some cases they couldn't do it in full generality. So what? Uh, so they left an open problem. What? Uh, just like before, the standard did. Uh, what happens in these remaining cases? And uh, uh, and for k equal to one, uh, we used. Uh, uh, we actually didn't use combinatorial atlas. We used the uh, Shenfield van Handel theory, uh, and uh, which was extended by Mein Schenfer to completely resolve k equal to one case. That's the technical part. Uh, that is uh, rather tedious. And we use some combinatorial tools such as uh, promotion and demotion uh, due to uh, Schützenberger and so forth. So, so this, uh, uh, this part is combinatorial, but completely not self-contained. Okay, so that is the story of uh, standards and equalities. Is everyone okay with this? Okay. Uh, now uh, we we move to the second part of the three in this talk. I want to I want to talk a, a little bit about matroids. So you've seen some matroids earlier uh, in the lecture series, and uh, now we're gonna uh, now I'm gonna mention uh, a, a different inequality that's very very recent uh, uh, paper that we wrote with Sui Hong, uh, sort of. Uh, so far, the final installment of a long series of papers, which uh, which started with uh, the combinatorial atlas, and is a, so direct descendants from from that series. So here we have a matroid. R is a rank. Uh, X is a ground set. B of M is a, is a set of bases of a matroid. Uh, so this is a subset of the ground set of size R, but some subset. And uh, we're going to fix a lot of numbers. I, I didn't want to do a simplified version. So this is a full generality version. We're going to fix number A. We're going to fix number C1 up to CR. We're going to fix subset R and uh, uh, subset S1 up to CK. They're all, uh, they're all disjoint. So this is very similar to what you've seen with POSET. With POSET, we fix uh, elements X, C1 up to CK, and uh, X, uh, Z1 up to ZK. And here we fix subset. And now, uh, and now here is a key line. Let uh, B of A be the number of uh, bases which always given intersections with our, with those disjoint subsets. Okay, so that is uh, uh, that is a key uh, a key definition. So uh, so if, if you didn't restrict uh, if you didn't restrict to uh, bases, if you considered all um, all R subset. Uh, or, uh, 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 then you would get uh, uh, you, you would get uh, some kind of binomial coefficients, but here uh, we actually need the uh, so rather uh, uh, here we're doing something different. We're looking at this uh, scaled version with P of A, uh, which is uh, number of uh, number of this uh, subset, the number of bases divided by some uh, some binomial coefficients that comes out. And uh, uh, and uh, turns out that this is the most important number. So again, this is just a scaled number of the number of bases uh, with given intersections uh, 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 with with a sequence of disjoint subset. And as you can imagine, uh, and probably have guessed uh, by now, the sequence is going to be a log concave. So P of A squared is greater or equal to P of A plus one times P of A minus one for all A. And uh, yes, Christian. Is is there, this looks like you have, a, you look at something like intersection of uh, your given matroid with a product of uniform matroids. Is there a generalization of that sort? You could take um, two matroids, you dissect them, uh, count the number of bases according to some parameter A. So what you uh, what you're saying is hinting in the right direction, but we we, we didn't go there. So the answer is I don't know. I don't think Sui Hong knows either, but because we didn't look at it. But Sui Hong, would you want to say? So I think what uh, 
it seems that what Christian said is actually like a is the is that using this thing to prove the Mason's inequality. That uh, this inequality we extend the end implies the Mason's conjecture with the uh, with the number of independent sets. Is that what you are asking, Christian? No, I'm I'm the Mason's inequality is just the one matroid, right? And and here this the set of bases that you define, it seems to me like this is equal to the intersection so, so to yeah to 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 the set of bases of this matroid which are also bases for another matroid namely so, the uniform matroid c1 times the uniform matroid c2 then as uh, the uniform matroid on s1 times the uniform matroid on sk you know yeah i see, I see. so i you so, so you're so, counting so uh, so true? I think we understand the question. So yeah. in, in this case, it is uh, it, it is true we didn't look at the intersection uh, intersection with other matroids mostly because uh, even though it is possible uh, to find out because of the uh, matroid intersection theorems, they're very hard. What we're saying is already hard enough, and uh, it would be interesting if there exists uh, uh, a generalization of the Stanley Young inequality, but uh, we didn't look. And in fact, uh, until recently, uh, until Jan, this was known only for regular matroid. It wasn't known uh, 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 in full generality. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it here. So Stanley, uh, Stanley, in the same paper I showed before, proved it just for regular matroid using the Alexander Fenke inequality. By uh, uh, basically, if you have regular, uh, if you have a regular matroid, you can you can have a kind of unimodular representation when, ev uh, when everything is uh, 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 zero, uh, zero, one, and then you look at zonotops, and, and zonotops uh, give you polytops for which you can apply Alexander Fenke inequality. And uh, and Jan uh, essentially took the technology in Brandon and Ha, uh, and uh, uh, and rather easily on two pages rewrite this inequality from. Uh, uh, from the uh, the difficult machinery of, of Lorentz and polynomials, uh, and uh, 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 and that was our starting point. Uh, uh, the, we took uh, uh, we basically wanted to find the inequality for matroids for for which the equality condition would be interesting and uh, uh, and actually uh, uh, rather non trivial. So in this particular case, people didn't explore it as much because uh, they didn't know it for general matroids. And it is possible that uh, this inequality can be further generalized. Uh, we don't know. Uh, but Stanley wanted to know equality conditions uh, for, uh, for for this inequality, and he made actually quite a bit of effort. He used uh, uh, f f just I, I don't have it on slides, but just for regular matroid, he used uh, he explored some machinery, even complained in the paper, oh the machinery is not strong enough as a mixed volume uh, technology, which goes back to Minkowski and Alexandrov. Um, uh, uh, and he derived uh, some very special case uh, of some equality conditions, and uh, our result is uh, uh, and, our, uh, and uh, our result is more general. We in fact understand it all. So, uh, so it turns out that uh, there is again somewhat similar dichotomy that you've seen uh, in uh, uh, happens for uh, for linear extensions of POSAT. So the equality condition is not on the polynomial hierarchy unless polynomial hierarchy collapses. So there is no way to understand when you have more than uh, uh, when you have one uh, uh, or more fixed subset. But if you don't have any fixed, uh, 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 I mean subsets S. R is also fixed, so you just have R. Uh, if you, if you, uh, and uh, and if you, uh, and in this case, this is again most important lemma that I wanted you to remember is that in a similar way with linear extensions, the equality of just two elements uh, next to each other of those two probabilities, or you can sort of think of them that way, that's already hard. Uh, and uh, the other result is that number of bases of uh, uh, in this particular case, I chose rational matroid is sharply complete. So rational matroid is matroid which is realizable over rations. Uh, so uh, so those are similar kind of lemmas that you've seen for uh, for the number of linear extensions. Uh, and we'll we'll come back to that. 
Uh, but uh, mo uh, more importantly for us, we actually, uh, for when k is equal to zero, uh, without any, a, 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 this is a purely uh, made sure it's theoretic result, we, we can show the equality conditions for uh, the original uh, uh, Stanley inequality without uh, larger k, or, I mean, of course, Stanley proved it for, uh, for all uh, k, uh, uh, we can show that there is a very clean description of equality condition. And if you, if you remember, uh, Swihong uh, defined parallel elements, so those are parallel elements in the uh, uh, in the projection of a matroid along the independent set A. So there has to be some number S, so this ratio is always the same. I know it's a complicated condition, uh, but uh, so, so for matroid on the ground set X and for every independent uh, uh, set in X uh, and, for, uh, and for every uh, non-loop X in the matroid, we, we, sh we need to have uh, uh, this ratio equal. So, we, so what we prove is that uh, this is purely uh, a matroid theoretic result uh, 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 that uh, those are exactly equality conditions for uh, for this inequality and uh, 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 but so this is a, is a case k equal to zero and the case k is greater or equal to one uh, we cannot write anything like that at all this would be impossible to write unless something major changes in uh, 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 in computer science now um, just a few words about the history of this result as I said Stanley proved a, a, very, a rather small um, uh, slice of this result uh, 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 for regular, f first of all, only for regular matroid, and second of all, uh, 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 this was not, uh, he didn't prove the equality, for, uh, the, the equality for any given A, he sort of proved the equality for all A. Can it be true that all those numbers are equal? And that basically the matroid is uniform, uh, more or less. And uh, 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 and we uh, uh, but uh, uh, but he already figured out some version of this relation, and our result uh, basically says, yeah, uh, we can use combinatorial atlas. So this is uh, uh, this result cannot be proved as far as we know without combinatorial atlas. So one can use combinatorial atlas to prove that result, and uh, the construction is somewhat similar to the construction that. Uh, you've seen in the very uh, 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 maybe in lecture two of, of Sui Hong, uh, uh, where you've seen parallel elements. Um, uh, uh, I think it's lecture two, right? Uh, 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 so, uh, so, so in order to obtain this purely uh, 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 purely mature theoretic result and resolved. Uh, Forty-year-old open problem by Stanley of finding equality conditions uh, for this inequality. We need this combinatorial atlas, and uh, so, for example, Lorentz and polynomials ca uh, cannot give this proof. So, uh, is is everyone okay with that? Any questions? I know I went uh, through this relatively quickly. Okay. So uh, at, at this point, I sort of had a choice whether uh, I should give you a technical part or complexity theoretic part. And I decided that I'm just uh, gonna uh, do a little more uh, 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 computational complexity, but so little you're not gonna notice. It's gonna be, uh, it's gonna, uh, it's gonna be very light from this point, uh, but uh, or relatively light as far as light as I can go. So I'm gonna talk about those two lemmas that you've seen and that I emphasized, which are similar. So, uh, so the first lemma was for linear extension. Decided whether two numbers of linear extensions are equal is hard, and the second lemma was deciding whether two uh, scaled numbers of uh, matroid bases is the same. So the way to remember is <coughs> is using this mnemonic number A is equal to num uh, uh, number of P. So we have two, su uh, two sets and the question is uh, uh, do these two sets have the same cardinality? Uh, so 
And now I need to define to you what's a counting coincidence. So this is, uh, is a way to understand the privilege result as thinking that there's a coincidence. So uh, to understand what is a coincidence, just look at two graphs and uh, these particular two graphs are well chosen to have the same number of perfect matching. This number is really easy to calculate. This number is one. Uh, and uh, it's sort of easier to see it here because that's a tree and there's just only one way to, uh, to do a perfect matching. But here it's a little more complicated. Uh, you quickly realize that this bridge has to be uh, an edge of, uh, of the perfect matching and then one, two, and five, six are also built up. So, so even though this case is... All, <clears throat> is, is sort of trivial, you can already see that you need an argument to understand that there is exactly one perfect matching, and that is the point. The point is the number of perfect uh, matchings is hard to compute uh, for graphs. Now, here is another instance of the same problem. Uh, you have a graph. You have another graph. Uh, you're asking whether those two graphs have the same number of Hamiltonian cycles. Well, for the one on the left, uh, it's very easy. That's, there is only one Hamiltonian cycle. However, for the graph on the right, that's not so easy. Uh, uh, and in fact, uh, uh, those of who, who are not prone to believe people like me, uh, you should try to figure it out. That's not going to be easy for you. Uh, and uh, you don't know. Maybe I'm lying. It is possible that this graph has uh, uh, more Hamiltonian cycles. I'm not lying. <laughs> But you, how how do you, how can you tell? It's a complicated graph. So it turns out that there is a counting coincidence. This graph on the left has exactly the same number of Hamiltonian cycles as uh, uh, the graph on the right. Here is another uh, counting coincidence. Uh, those two graphs, which are rather large, uh, do happen to have exactly the same number of spanning trees. Uh, it took me a while to come up with with those graphs. And that's not easy. Even so, counting, uh, uh, you know, there's a matrix tree theorem. Uh, so counting uh, the number of spanning trees uh, uh, sh should be computationally easy. However, this involves the taking determinants of uh, matrices of, which are size seven by seven. And uh, good luck with that if you can do it uh, really, really fast. Uh, uh, so I'm not going to tell you the trick of how I came up with those two graphs. Uh, and in fact, maybe you don't even see that those two graphs are not isomorphic. Uh, they're not. <laughs> those two graphs are different and have the same number of spanning trees. Why is that? Well, it's, uh, it's a coincidence. Uh, let's uh, move to things uh, we, uh, we all know and like. Uh, so I figured out here are two young diagrams which have the same number of standard young tableaus. Why? Is, uh, uh, which I, I just wrote uh, it's 429. That's what Hooklang's formula gives us. So for those of you who have never seen this before, which may be not in the audience, but nevertheless, uh, uh, standard young tableaus is the way uh, to put numbers from one up to n, which increase in rows and columns if you put them in the diagram. So it's very easy to compute the number of sta uh, uh, standard young tableaus using a Kuklin's formula. However, uh, it's when you just look at those two diagrams, it's not particularly obvious to see that they have the same number of standard young tableaus. That's what I call a counting coincidence. Hope everyone is okay with this. Any questions about this from the silent audience? Okay, so uh, so once now now that I set it up, I may as well uh, 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 define what I'm talking about. So if f is a counting function, basically uh, if uh, this is a function which counts the number of certain combinatorial objects. So, uh, so combinatorial objects can be Young diagrams, and the function is a number of standard Young tableaus. So, a coincidence problem is a problem of deciding uh, whether uh, uh, this function is equal on uh, two uh, uh, different in, uh, inputs, uh, also given to you. So, given two inputs x and y, is, uh, is this function the same? So, given two Young diagrams, is it the same number of standard Young tableaus? And uh, the first observation you know, is. What yeah. what what is what is the CF? I don't understand uh, the CF. Uh, the C C CF is, is a decision is problem. It the... It's a decision problem given x and y uh, are the two numbers the same or not. I see. It's okay. a decision problem given x and y. Thank you. Yeah. That, that, yeah. yeah that was... 
That, so this is basically a notation, notation for this problem. So, but this, uh, uh, so notice that uh, x and y uh, can be any. So for any any two inputs x and y, uh, is it true that the value of the function is the same of x and y? And the first observation is if the function is easy to compute, just like the number of spanning trees or uh, mm, uh, or, or, or the uh, hook uh, or the number of standard young tableaus. Uh, so those uh, so that function is really easy, can be computed in polynomial time. Then this decision problem is also in P. So it can be decided in polynomial time if if two young diagrams have the same number of uh, standard young tableaus or any uh, any two given two graphs have the same number of spanning trees. However, if the problem, uh, if the decision problem uh, in this case is NP-complete, so not, for example, not, if, if your function is the number of Hamiltonian cycles, it's the number of Hamiltonian cycles, is, is uh, 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 so deciding whether there exists at least one problem, uh, there is at least one Hamiltonian cycle that's NP-complete, uh, then, uh, 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 then this coincidence problem is already called np hard. That's immediate because we're trying to decide if it's uh, if it's zero or not zero. So uh, so here are uh, uh, more observations. Uh, uh, so what one can do with this is one can define the whole class C equal to P of uh, 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 which consists of problems of the kind uh, of, the, of of coincidence problems, basically. The, this is none of this is our definition, by the way. I'm just teaching you a tiny little bit of computer science that was developed uh, about 30 years ago, maybe 25 years ago. Uh, so C equal to P is uh, uh, what it looks like. It's basically a class of coincidence problems. So F, uh, F and G uh, uh, are uh, two functions. Uh, 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 in in Sharpie, uh, so in principle, this is more general. So this could be number of Hamiltonians. One can be number of Hamiltonian cycles. Another one can be number of spanning trees. And we're asking if f of x equals to g of y. And uh, uh, and let me just mention that uh, it's uh, it follows from the general uh, theory that uh, 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 that the, uh, that every kind of, well this is trivial every kind of problem is in this class just because you can take f equals to g uh, but it also follows from a general theory that if you're doing counting number of three such solutions solution of of, of boolean formulas uh, so, uh, so in asking others to uh, do these two boolean formulas have the same number of solutions uh, that kind of sense problem is a complete in this sequel to p class uh, uh, so what we uh, uh, so what we show is that if uh, if this uh, if this uh, uh, class is in coin p then it's uh, then the polynomial character collapses uh, to the second level so there's a big collapse the point is uh, uh, if if you compare it with this coincidence problem should not uh, sh 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 should not be in uh, in coin p if if uh, if this problem for example for for three sat is in coin p then uh, uh, there's a collapse so one should understand that this class is bigger than uh, uh, Cohen P, and in fact, uh, uh, it's uh, it, it's a complicated uh, it, it, it's it's a rather complicated class for which there are not that many uh, uh, there are at, at least until our papers there are not that many uh, um, complete problems. So uh, so there are two types of problems that one can consider. Uh, uh, so I'm gonna so the way to think of that as simple uh, simple as a hardest problems and not simple, which are not hardest. But the, uh, so there is a fancy word parsimonious here. Parsimonious means that there is a bijective proof uh, to the three sub. Uh, so those problems include Hamiltonian cycles, three coverings uh, in, in, in graphs, uh, number of permutation patterns, and even a Kronecker coefficient. So for those problems, so uh, one can ask the decision, are the two uh, Kronecker coefficients the same? That's a legitimate problem. I give you three, uh, uh, two triples of partitions, lambda menu and uh, uh, alpha beta gamma. And the question is, uh, do these two uh, Kronecker coefficients e uh, equal or not? 
uh, and uh, and which shows that uh, basically uh, the, this problem is hard. So in, in all these cases, including chronic recognition, of course, Hamiltonian cycle. Uh, so, those, uh, uh, so you know all these problems are sharp complete and have a parsimonious reduction, which means I said uh, you can start with a three sub. Uh, uh, formula and embed this problem into one of these problems. So, in some sense, even chronic air coefficient com contains the complexity of three sub. So, uh, and so in, in, in the, all these cases, that means that the coincidence problem is not in the polynomial hierarchy unless polynomial hierarchy collapses. That's what uh, that's uh, that, that, uh, that's a complexity result that we prove, and it's relatively easy. So, uh, so the difficult classes are the ones for which there is no bijective proof uh, uh, of that. There is no injection from formulas, and uh, those in, uh, so those include the perfect matching. Uh, very famously, that's because deciding whether uh, a graph uh, has a uh, has a perfect uh, matching can be done polynomial time, so it, there cannot be parsimonious reduction. And similarly, independent set, every graph has at least one independent set. Other ideals of the posit, obviously, there are lots of other ideals, linear, and most importantly for us, linear extensions of posit and basis of rational matrix. Of course, every matrix has at least one base, for example, and every uh, posit has at least one linear extension. So, uh, so there cannot be a parsimonious reduction to three sub. And uh, what we prove that uh, so it was known before that all these functions are sharp complete. And uh, what we prove is that um, in uh, in all these uh, cases, uh, um, uh, the proof that in all these cases the coincidence problem is not in the polynomial hierarchy unless polynomial hierarchy collapses. So, uh, so let me. Uh, uh, so, in particular, in particular, if you have two poses and you're asking, uh, it, it, that's a decision problem. Do these two poses have the same number of linear extensions? There's no way to do that. Uh, basically, uh, there's no way to do it easy. In uh, and by easy, uh, one can understand the meaning of easy on several levels. So, in particular, uh, uh, it's not going to be. Uh, 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 there's no witness. There's no way to even say, "Oh, I have I have a particular key which can open this result." So, there's uh, 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 there's no witness. To, to that fact, and the same for number of bases. If you if you have two two matroids, so two sets of vectors uh, 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 of, of rationals, and I'm asking, is this set uh, is this set of vectors has the same number of uh, uh, bases as that set of vectors? There is no way to do that in the same way. And now you can see how that uh, that matches up uh, uh, with. Uh, um, Oh, let me go uh, back to here. So, the, uh, so those two lemmas are very, very close to this result. Uh, uh, this lemma is saying number of linear uh, these two numbers of linear extensions, yes, they are from the same person, but those are two different sets uh, of linear extensions. And uh, and and uh, and this coincidence is yes, this is from the same matrix, but those are two different set of. Uh, basis in the matroid. And what we do is essentially we use uh, uh, this uh, 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 this result that I sh uh, uh, that I showed to you for linear extensions and for rational matroids, uh, uh, and we embed uh, um, uh, embed this result into the uh, into the main lemma uh, uh, the, to, to this main lemma that I showed you before. Is this at least roughly the idea clear? Okay. And uh, so there are a couple of uh, ingredients that I wanted to show uh, before uh, uh, I finish the talk. So without going into details, it's it's just a fun thing to understand. So uh, uh, so we need the following uh, as a lemma uh, as, uh, for, for, for proofs. We need the following very recent result by uh, No Kravitz and Ashwin Sa, uh, published in twenty one, that says that if uh, if if you denote by t of n the number of linear extensions of all posets of size n, then this set of numbers is very large. It's basically exponentially large. That's what we need. 
and uh, this is the uh, uh, this, uh, this was a major breakthrough, at least from my point of view. Previous uh, previ uh, un until that point, uh, the best previous bound was n square. So as you can see, this is a giant leap from n square to c to the n. Uh, uh, so the n square was obtained by Bridget Tanner uh, uh, back when she was a graduate student. So at MIT, uh, so and we need an exp uh, we, we don't exactly need n over log n. Uh, we would have been fine with uh, c to the square root of n. But in order for our result to work, we needed some exponential uh, growth in this function. So again, uh, you're looking at various posets, sort of like this posset, and looking at the numbers number that comes out as number of linear extension of that poset. And we're saying that the set of numbers is very large. So for posets of size n, this set of numbers contain exponentially many numbers, and uh, in fact, all numbers, one from one up to exponential. And, uh, uh, and just to finish this uh, 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 chain of thought, we, we also need a similar uh, uh, result for the number of spanning trees. So one can define t of n, the number of spanning trees of all graphs with n vertices. So it was proved very, very recently by Stone that this is an, uh, that this is an exponential set. This is completely independent uh, uh, events, which also happened to to, to hold uh, right before our paper uh, uh, was started. So uh, so he proved c to uh, roughly c to the n to the two thirds. So it's again exponential growth. And uh, uh, this was a giant breakthrough. The previous result, previously, uh, it was shown that these numbers contain uh, uh, everything between zero and uh, six n, or something like that. So you can see how big of a leap uh, that is. That was a, 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 a large breakthrough, and we needed it. So we didn't have to. Uh, uh, we didn't have to reprove it. I'm not sure we would have reproved it without. If we didn't know strong results, uh, I sort of spent a long time uh, googling uh, whether this was known uh, or not, and eventually, uh, because Stone used slightly different terminology, and eventually they figured it out. And uh, with that, uh, I want to say thank you all. That's it. This, this is a Santa Monica sunset. No, thank you. Thank you so much. That's so great. Any questions for Igor? If you have questions, then you can just unmute and ask. Krisha? Yeah. Oh, you're, you're not asking a question. Uh, you're muted anyway. I think if there's any questions everyone would ask you during the talk already. <laughs> No, I mean, and the 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 combinatorial atlas, which gave the title to this to this series, to me, I mean, I haven't, I've, I've known of its existence, but I hadn't have didn't have the time to to actually look at the papers, long papers. Um, it's still I'm sorry about that. <laughs> it's still a bit, still a bit uh, mysterious. Like, um, I mean, it, sure, you have a you have a. It seems to me it's a very intricate way of bookkeeping and getting these inequalities to 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 build these various inductions kind of into into one thing. But the the secret really is how do how do you come up with your atlas for the tune to the specific situation, right? I mean, this is so so, so yeah. On the on the high level, uh, uh, this is really basically. Um, um, the usual way of if you want to prove a result, uh, you don't just prove a result by induction, you prove a stronger result by induction. So in our particular uh, sense, uh, like it's very hard to prove that every tree has at least one endpoint. It's very easy to prove that by induction that every tree has at least two endpoints. So this is what we teach to, I don't know, undergraduates, high school. Um, and uh, that is turns out to be a secret here. Part of this is reverse engineering. Part of that is uh, Sui Hong's ingenuity, how to do that. If, um, uh, but uh, essential, uh, and part of that goes back to uh, some very early papers, including uh, uh, so papers by uh, Jun Hai and his co-authors. So 
so the, so the analog of two endpoints uh, is replaced as you've seen uh, several times with one uh, there is one positive eigenvalue and uh, so there are matrices and they uh, uh, and uh, the concavity is a byproduct of uh, um, of those matrices being hyperbolic means one positive eigenvalue. How 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 do you prove that? Uh, well, the matrices itself are relatively uh, easy to construct if you know uh, the inequality you aim to prove. Uh, uh, but no. it, sometimes it doesn't work at all. What doesn't work completely is uh, um, um, is sort of uh, induc is the induction if the matrices are in a undeformed uh, form so as you as, as you remember there was a parameter t which uh, we, we needed a deformation for this uh, for, for this to work and that differ uh, so somehow uh, uh, and that's a different trick compared to the strong induction so instead of proving uh, so basically instead of proving a result you're proving a more general result for uh, which doesn't sort of but more general for which that which doesn't include that result but includes it, that result as a limit so and yeah i mean but this is but this is this is very similar to the lorentzian uh, mechanism right it's it's um, very similar so to everything uh alexander okay. is the same is alexander used the same trick in his proof of alexander fenkel inequalities this is this is this is an old thing and uh, if you know for example the proof of uh uh, Hovansky to see a proof of Alexander Fenkel inequality. They use the same uh, idea because you prove it for integral polytops and then you take a limit. Uh, but you won't be able to prove it straight away. So there are lots of uh, uh, so it's uh, yeah, you know Terry Tao says that you know you 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 need to keep collecting tricks and he collected a lot of tricks. So these are these are two standard tricks uh, which we use strong uh, stronger induction and the deformation um and um, you know <laughs> I'm, I'm, still, I'm still i'm still i'm still uh trying to, to to like if i if i want to use a commercial atlas for a problem maybe later uh, down the line um 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 like suppose i have what i what i hear from you essentially is if Suppose I have um, maybe a Lorentzian polynomial type proof of a weaker result. Okay. Is there a way to transfer this proof to combinatorial atlas and then maybe get a bigger? Yes. Yeah, that would be, uh, that would be really interesting. So, so we wrote one paper called Introduction to Combinatorial Atlas, which happens to be short and uh, it contains uh, in one, uh, it has three parts. One part contains uh, com completely self-contained proof of Mason's inequality, which I mean, it basically uh, uh, kind of similar to what Huang was uh, uh, telling in the very first lecture. And, uh, but uh, it's all very uh, carefully written. Uh, but the second part is basically saying, look, all the Lorenzian technology, uh, at least at the level at which we understand it, completely embeds into combinatorial atlas. You, uh, you, uh, you. If, if something can be proved using Lorenzian, it can be uh, proved using combinatorial atlas, but there is more. So somehow... Uh, mm, Lorenz and technology is sort of fundamentally commutative. That's because when you take derivatives, they commute derivative of x with respect to x and with respect to y. Uh, when you when you move into linear algebra, you can have non-commutative stuff. That's why we have all those finicky deformations and so forth, uh, uh, which and uh, that's why in particular we have uh, 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 results about linear extensions that cannot be obtained. Uh, uh, using Lorenz and technology, that's because the posets and linear extensions are fundamentally non-commutative. Once you put a number three, putting number four cannot be done in the same place. And so, you know, this is not interchangeable. While for Metroid, obviously, if you include uh, 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 vector V and then vector W, and you should be able to do it the other way around in the basis. So, so somehow, <coughs> excuse me, uh, 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 somehow our technology is bigger 
but it's less friendly, it's more technical, more complicated. Uh, and uh, I kind of agree in a sense that uh, there is uh, there is no way to tell right away if you can uh, if something can be easily done or not. Uh, and in fact, uh, at some point we failed this. We Huang and I wanted to reprove uh, something called Kansas inequality. So that's a variation on the Stan uh, Stanley's inequality. But when you have uh, uh, two elements instead of one and some particular difference and that didn't seem to work uh, uh, using combinatorial atlas uh, at least uh, that's what uh, Su Hong tells me and he is uh, uh, much much better uh, than I am in understanding uh, the technical details of that so so even so we needed that for something else and even though we we're hoping that we can do it using combinatorial atlas we could and uh, so if you talk to van handel he uh, he would say oh there are geometric reasons why this might not be true there are hyperplanes which go this way and that way and uh, we you know i'm not sure there is a, a neat a neat way to answer that uh, essentially, we did what we could, <laughs> and uh, and uh, what we could is a lot. So <laughs> filling a lot of pages that way, but uh, and we also obtained you've seen the correlation inequalities last lecture and so forth. So, uh, but uh, I wouldn't. Uh, uh, um, so we definitely can do a lot of stuff that Lorenz and polynomials and uh, other tools cannot do. Uh, but uh, there is no uh, sort of secret. Oh. You, uh, you look at that problem, it can be done, and that problem cannot. I don't think uh, that is something that uh, 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 that we can just uh, that we can just give you right away. Any other? Thank you so much. That's okay. so interesting. Okay. I, thank you so much thank for the talk and coming. thank you for everyone for coming and hopefully we will see you all next year. All right. Bye. -bye. Bye.